Welcome back to day 10 of Random Math Stuff. This right here is the Flint Hills series, and here it is again using condensed sigma notation. The interesting thing about this series is that no one knows whether it diverges, goes to infinity, or not. Usually in math, it's pretty easy to tell whether an infinite sum will converge to a specific value or diverge out to infinity, but this is the exception, and if you look closely at the sine term you'll see why. Sine of x is very predictable if x is a rational multiple of pi, but things get a lot more unpredictable if x is an integer. Let's visualize this in Desmos. Here I've drawn a circle whose radius is sine of a. Right now a is 1, so the radius is sine of 1, which is around 0.84. But now let's change a. Now it's 2, 3, 4, and so on. You can see that the circle is kind of doing whatever it wants. You might be able to tell that it's sort of fluctuating, expanding then shrinking, but other than that, there's pretty much no pattern. Now what does this mean for our infinite sum? We see that sine squared of x is in the denominator. So if sine of x is very close to zero, then this term suddenly gets really big. But of course, we don't know when sine of x gets very close to zero, which is what makes this series unpredictable. So this infinite sum is essentially sine squared of n fighting against n cubed. n cubed gets really big quickly, but sine of n is more unpredictable, it randomly goes to zero. And if it gets close enough to zero enough times, it'll win out against n cubed and the series will diverge. Okay, now let's get back to the Desmos graph. You may have noticed that when a equaled 22, the circle suddenly became really small because sine of 22 happens to be really close to zero. And you might also notice that 22 over 7 is a really good approximation for pi. And this isn't a coincidence. Watch this. 355 over 113 is an even better approximation for pi, and 355 circle is so small you need to zoom in to see it. Wow, you have to zoom in really far. Yeah, by the way, 355 over 113 is a really good approximation for pi. The continued fraction approximations go from 22 over 7 to this, to 355 over 113 to this. Okay, I kind of went off on a tangent, but the point is, if a is the numerator of a pi approximation, then sine of a ends up being small. But this only works for the numerators, not the denominators. Why? Because 355 over 113 is close to pi, 355 is correspondingly close to 113 pi. So sine of 355 will be close to sine of 113 pi, which equals 0, just like every other multiple of pi. The point of all this is, the behavior of the Flint Hill series is closely related to all these fractional approximations. The better these approximations are, the more likely the Flint Hill series is to diverge. Okay, one more thing. There's something called a rationality measure, which basically tells you how easily a number is approximated by fractions. So, if pi has a large irrationality measure, then that means fractions approximate it very well, better than you'd expect. But if pi has a low irrationality measure, then fractions need to get really big in order for it to be a good approximation. This may seem backwards because you would think that if a number had high irrationality measure, it would be very irrational and not close to fractions, but it's the other way around for some reason. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Short video because I didn't really feel like making a long one. And I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.